Okay, Jerry's given us a vision for Redbird and Red Hawk. The question is, obviously, how do you do this? What, uh, what elements came together? Why this airplane? Why this engine? Why these avionics? Tell all. Well, first of all, we started with the Cessna 172 because I personally believe it's the best flight training airplane ever built. It's, uh, it makes it easy for people to learn how to fly. They can reduce the cost by reducing the hours it takes in the flight training. The problem is the expense of continuing to refurbish the fleet. When Continental, our partner, was interested in picking up the STC for this engine, we became very interested then in mounting it on a 172 and using it in the flight training industry. That's what really brought the two together. In terms of the airframe, we just look for airframes that are in good shape and corrosion free and everything else we're going to take care of. We'll strip it down to the bare metal, paint it, interior, avionics, and engine and put it to use in the flight school. Now each of the individual selections, the engine, the avionics, what you did with the interior, describe them and tell us why you made those selections. Well the interior, we are putting a product in that looks very well but is very durable. We designed this as a flight training airplane and just as a flight training airplane. So everything we did was in the notion that this has to be used and maintained on a heavy basis by different people all during the day. We do the interiors ourselves in San Marcos now and you can see the results and it comes out very well. In terms of the avionics, our partners at Aspen offer a really good solution for having a glass capability at a really good price point. So our learners are going to be able to learn both glass and traditional avionics at a very good cost point for the owner of the aircraft. And the engine was a no-brainer. It is a Mercedes-Benz turbo diesel and we're going to be putting hours on it and testing maintenance cycles but very impressed with the way it's been put together, the installation, the engineering that's gone behind it and now that Continental is supporting it in the United States we think it's going to be a real winner. What are you learning so far? That it cruises at about half the gas that our other engines and it's very simple to operate. It's got a fully automated digital control system. It's pretty much student pilot proof. You can take it from idle to full power and you're not going to over boost the engine or under speed the engine or shock cool the engine and it performs as well as the traditional piston engines. Now what does it take to recraft one of these airplanes? How long? How much? What's the whole process look like? Well, we think that we can do an engine installation in about a week and a half. We think we can do the paint if we get our processes in San Marcos together in about a week and a half, and the interior is about the same. So we believe that with a very small staff, we can do three of these a month, and that's what we're going to do for the next four airplanes that are going into our flight school to kind of refine those processes. The flight school industry has been one of two ways, either by expensive airplanes and workout leasebacks that have a hard time really amortizing the amount of money that goes in and out and so forth or you buy these ratty old airplanes that impress nobody and make the flight school look like the third world. How are these going to fit in and do you think this is something that people will really take a hard look at it and go yeah we can give this a try? You know over the last 10 years we've looked at every single airplane that you know was eligible to be put in a flight training category and they all had issues that we didn't think we were going to work either economically or structurally in the rigors of flight training. So now we take an airplane that's been proven and we bring it in with uh, new avionics and a new power plant technology and we bring it at a price point that makes it very attractive. In other words, every time I have a discussion with a manufacturer who wants to bring airplanes to our school and we start talking about the pros and cons, it always ends with, would we be having this discussion if a 172 cost $150,000 and the answer is no. Okay. Now, I don't believe that's going to be our price point, but we will tell you what the price point is at migration. Is there going to be a transition issue when you take somebody who's been trained in something with a diesel engine and a glass panel and throw them back into the rest of the fleet, which isn't necessarily as updated as this airplane is? I think we have to acknowledge in this industry that with all the different kinds of avionics that are out on the market now and the evolution that's taken place there, getting into the same airframe with different avionics is pretty much a type rating. And I believe that that's going to always be the case. There isn't going to be a generic training for airplane single engine as we get on our certificate. And it's going to require the flight training industry to come up with the means to make sure people know what they're doing in each of the individual airplanes that they fly. And that's what we do. Well, it's certainly an exciting project. I've got to ask, whose idea was the aero graffiti? Well, that was Jerry's idea. 
But I will say this, it's going to be a hard airplane to walk by at Oshkosh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not many people have seen a 172 that looks like this. And if it attracts attention and we start getting people then interested in affordable aircraft for flight training, then it's certainly done its job. Aero TV is brought to you by... The Evolution Flight Display System from Aspen Avionics delivers unique reliability and safety features to GA pilots and is truly the most flexible and affordable EFIS available. Aspen Avionics, a new way to look at avionics.